Gemara, the Gemara in Masechet Ketubot, page 77b, discusses how to heal a balaratan, that same disease that we're talking about that you can get from flies. Now, they explain, what is this balaratan? It's a growth in the brain. We call it today tumor. And the actual discussion of, of the procedure is in the Gemara. The Gemara actually talks about what exactly they did to remove this brain tumor. And they talk about how the knife that they had to use had to be very, very sharp, very precise. But unlike today, where they use a saw or sometimes a laser to cut the head, which creates a lot of blood damage and very, very difficult recovery, the sages had much, much better way. In order to create a hole in the, uh, in the head, in order to take out this balaratan, what do they do? They put a cream. To put a very, very special type of cream on the skull, which would make it soft, and they could open it with their with the uh, very simple incision. So, doctors today are not the most advanced. Just a few decades ago, there was a new disease that came to the world, according to scientists, called AIDS. And they say that the originator of the uh, AIDS, or the HIV virus that later becomes AIDS, is the monkey. There's two interesting things about this. It's not new. Midrash Rabba and the Gemara Masechet Sota. So it's in two places. Both of these things were written 2,000 years ago. Any place that has a high level of promiscuity will have a plague of germs that destroy the body. Specifically the white blood cells. Rabbi Simalai says anywhere that you see iznut, which is promiscuity, anywhere that you see immodesty, women walking around half naked. Which has become common today. Or uh, people that are promiscuous, which is celebrated today in our world. So he says anywhere that you see iznut, Andra Lamusi comes to the world and kills good and bad. Andra Lamusi is another name for AIDS. It's just the Gemara's language of AIDS. Now one other thing that's very, very interesting about AIDS is something called Torah codes. Torah codes is finding secrets within the Torah using math, using computers and math. Where, for example, if you want to find certain information, let's say, for example, you want to find a, um, something that's already happened. So, for example, you want to find information about the Holocaust. The Holocaust has happened, we know that it's happened. So there's different information, relevant words. You want to find where if the Torah is divine, that means that it has to have all knowledge. Not just knowledge that existed 3,000 years ago. It has to have all knowledge, including today's lecture. So now, you have to have a way to find it. One of the ways of finding it is using something called Torah codes, where you look for a specific word, and the computer program will find this word in the Torah using equal mathematical skips. Meaning, that let's say, for example, you look for the word Hitler in Machshim Ovezichro, Okay, now you're looking for it obviously in Hebrew. So first you look for the, le the letter He, then you look for Yud, because obviously Hitler didn't exist 3,000 years ago. So you have to look for it, how is it gonna find it? So if the computer finds this word, he's gonna find this word where each one of the, the separation between each one of the letters has to be equal. Meaning the He, let's say there's 50, 50 letters space, and then there's the Yud, and there's another 50 letters, and there's another, another uh, uh, letter, and so on. But it has to be equal mathematical skip. Meaning in order for you to see that this is actually not just a random word, the separation between each one of the letters to make up this word have to be equal. And the lower the number, the more you see that this is intelligent design and not just something that's random. A lot of people try to challenge Torah codes by saying, yeah, we found interesting words even in the book uh, Fiddler on the Roof and Harry Potter and all of these other books. This is complete nonsense. Number one, they didn't find anything relevant. And number two, when I tell you what they actually find in the Torah, you'll understand 
why there's nothing compared to Torah codes when you actually know what you're talking about. Now, when they looked for Hitler and the Holocaust and all the evil things that they did to us, they find all of these words, all of them, in the same page in the Torah. And not only do they find all of these relevant words, whether it's Hitler or it's the Shoah, which is the Hebrew word for Holocaust, or it's different ser sergeants that he had, the generals that he had, or the, co the concentration camps, the gas chambers, all of these relevant words that are hard to say and hard to hear, but all of these words are exactly on the same page in the Torah. And what is that page talking about? It talks about what happens when Am Yisrael doesn't listen to Hashem, the punishment we get. So you see that the page that you find all of these words is the very same page that is relevant to these words. So now, in the uh, Torah, you're going to find interesting codes, you're going to find a lot of interesting things. One of the things that the Torah forbids is homosexuality. It forbids homosexuality. Hashem says you're not allowed to be a homosexual. Now, when you're looking for the word AIDS in the Torah, and anything relevant to AIDS, whether it's the doctors behind it, that discovered it, the scientists, and the originator, which is the monkey, all of those words you find on the same page. What's the page talking about? Two things, homosexuality and bestiality. Both of which are the, in essence, in Hashem's eyes, the same thing. How do we know that bestiality and homosexuality are the same thing in Hashem's eyes? Because every time that the sex crime of homosexuality is, is, uh, is mentioned in the Torah, right next to it, it talks about bestiality. To Hashem, it's the same thing. So again, someone that has this problem, I understand, they have a desire, they're born that way. We're not saying we have to kill them. But just because someone has a desire does not mean they have to act on it. You know, if you have a, uh, you know, a, a person that you know that's a, a kleptomaniac and they need to steal things, you know, you're not going to invite him into your house. Yeah, but, it's, but he was born that way. He's a kleptomaniac. Yeah, but let him be a kleptomaniac somewhere else. I don't want him to steal my stuff. Or if one of your children, chas v'shalom, has a friend that's a pyromaniac, likes to light things on fire. Yeah, but Ima, it's my friend. Yeah, but he's going to burn our house, Bubby. Go, go, go play in his house. Burn his house. Won't burn my house. Yeah, but he was born that way, Ima. Okay, let him be born that way over there. Meaning that just because someone has a desire doesn't mean we have to accept it to be politically correct. This is all complete nonsense. We have to do what the Torah says because now that we see all of these proofs, we know for sure that Hashem is the one that told us.